I'm back with the next segment in the Streets of Paris event. This one is going to cover the bookstore. So what I've done is there was blank area on the second floor on the sides of the building. And so what I'm doing is kind of creating some faux businesses. The businesses will only have a bay window, so there's nothing on the inside, but I just thought it would make the project look more complete. And instead of using the big window, I'm going to be using a half scale version of that window, which fits really nicely on the second floor. So let's get started. The window that I'm using is very similar to the larger one. It's just half the size. And it uh, comes with mostly the same pieces. You have the front window piece, you have uh, the two side panels, and then you have a top and then the lower shelf. The difference is it comes with a back and the back is open. So the nice thing about this window is if you have an opening in your structure that you're putting this on, you'd be able to see all the way through the window into the shop. So in the case of what I'm doing here, um, I'm going to be hanging it on a wall, so uh, I wouldn't use it that way, but, but if you're doing something different, that's, that makes it really nice. Just like with all the other windows, I'm adding lighting, and um, I'm again adding a tea light. Now, the important thing here is, of course, when you start to put your window together, you're going to want to punch that hole uh, before you get it assembled so that it's easier, and I pinched punched it just large enough for the uh, the candle part of it to go through. Now, because this is a much smaller uh, window, the, uh, the tea light is a little bit bigger, a little bit wider than the width of, of the window. And so what I did is you want to punch that hole so that the tea light, the excess, hangs over the front of the window, not the back. Um, and what will happen is with the uh, awning, you, won't, you will not see that because the awning that I'm using is deep enough that uh, it's going to cover all of that and you won't see that overlap. The awning that I'm using for this is a little bit different than the flat ones that I used for the larger windows. And um, it is at an angle. And um, the reason I didn't use an angled one for below is it just takes up a whole lot more space. And if I had done an angled one below, uh, there wouldn't be enough space for this window and for the awning that goes with it. And uh, to go with this uh, project, I've created a new collage sheet and you can see it there and it includes the awning. And so you've got the top piece that's at an angle and then you've got the signage that hangs in the front and you've got two side panels and then you've got two side triangles. And uh, I demonstrated how to put these, all of these different uh, uh, awnings together in an earlier tutorial and I'll give you the timestamp for that. So if you wanna go back and refer to that, you'll know exactly where to jump to in that video. But I do want to mention one little thing, and that is when you put it together, you've got the side triangles. And now one tab is going to attach to the top, and one side is going to be used to attach to the wall. And then you can see there's a side, the side panel will attach to uh, both the, uh, the front signage, and then it will go across the triangle and then go around the back. And then you just need to snip off that little bit of the triangle to make that all nice and even and clean. And then next you can see a picture of the uh, awning glued in place on, on the side of the wall. Now to attach the window to the wall, I had to come up with a different strategy than what I've been using. Down below, I didn't attach the window. That way I could just pull it away from the wall, tilt it and get it out from underneath the awning so that I could turn the lights on. That's not gonna work here because it has to be attached to the wall. And of course I don't wanna glue it or I can't get it out to turn the light on and off and I can't replace the battery. So what I did is I thought picture hanging. And so what I'm doing is I'm just hanging it on the wall uh, with nails. So the first thing I did is I created a back, even though as I showed you earlier, it comes with a little back, but it's a see-through one and I need mine to be solid. Um, so I cut a piece of chipboard, covered that with some decorative paper, and then I made uh, two holes in that, and those are going to be the holes that I'm going to use to hang the window um, on the wall. And then I took that piece of chipboard, and, and I should mention too that the placement of the holes, I placed it so that it would the holes would end up behind the books that are going to be sitting on the shelves that I added, and then the other one's going to be behind uh, a poster so that you won't see those nails coming through those holes. So then I, once I got my holes marked on the back piece, the back chipboard piece of the window, then I took that 
And I went ahead, of course, and already the the uh, the awning is already hung, and that's to help me position where the window is going to be. And of course, I also held the window up to that and make sure that uh, the awning where I'm going to place that the awning is just barely going to cover the top of the window. And then I used that piece of chipboard to mark those holes on the wall. Then I poked tiny little holes in the wall and I'm using very small nails or you could use um, very, very small screws just so long as they're, they're not too long. You've got to get as much into the, la the larger chipboard of the, the house kit um, as you can. And so, like I say, I pre-poked some holes and then as I inserted these nails, I added glossy, or not glossy accents, E6000 to them. And then once that dried and I added some more uh, E6000 to them because you're not going to see what's behind there. So you want to get as much of that on there so that you get a really solid hold. And also be sure to uh, put your nails in as an angle because that's what's going to help carry the load of the window and also make sure that it doesn't slip off. So once all that dried, then I could go forward with uh, actually putting the rest of my window together. Just like I did with the other windows, I'm adding some faux glass and um, the other windows I had some signage that went along with the, um, with the store or the shop that you could print on transparency film and put that in the front window. And I have the same for this and this is sized to fit this small window. And um, I'll have that on my blog for you so that you can just download it for free and use that if you would like. And then um, I use that in the front and then on the little side windows, I use that faux plastic that's like faux glass that I've used in all the other windows. I put those in the sides. Now that I've got the window assembled, um, it's painted, it has its glass in. I have, uh, I have uh, added the area for the light, the hole. Now I start working on what's gonna go inside the actual accessories. And you can see here on the back wall, I have uh, the piece of chipboard that I'm using. I have glued a couple of shelves. They're made with the microscope slides. And also I've bent the L brackets or bit filigree to make L brackets. Same thing you've seen me do in just about every one of the tutorials. And then I've also got some posters on the walls. And that comes again from the collage sheet, which has four different posters for you to choose from. And then I'll also mention that um, in addition, in case you want to actually do a real shop, you want to make one of your rooms a real shop, I've included a whole bunch of little signs for the different sections that you would find in a bookstore, as well as uh, a, a sign for the store. And then you can see I also have like a sandwich board for on the sidewalk, and I'll show you how I use those later. So anyway, and then on the shelves that you see lots of books, and I used a couple of different collage sheets uh, that have these little miniature books and I cut out pieces of paper to fill the insides uh, the size of each of the books and then glued those in place and then I did the same thing for the bottom of the window um, below the shelves again I've just added more of the little books uh, arranged them some standing up some on their side some displayed in the window and so that filled out my window As with the other windows, I wanted to dress up the bottom with panels, and so I did them exactly the same way. I've got two different panels, one a little bit bigger than the other, and then I've trimmed out the top panel with using the, uh, the little thin uh, metallic stickers that I've used before. And then I also added some uh, embellishments that were made out of clay. In this case, I used uh, paper clay, and I used a different mold because the mold I've been using um, was just too big. And so I've used this other little mold and I find because it's such a detailed mold that I had a better results with the paper clay than, than doing uh, the, the, the poly clay and baking it. So um, I, that's what I would recommend you do. And I just left the pieces in the clay in the uh, mold and let it dry and, before I removed it. And the bottom side was still a little bit wet, but the top was dry enough that it, it wouldn't warp. Uh, I've mentioned this all the time when I work with paper clay, it likes to warp so as it dries. So if you're going to take things out of a mold, you need to put a little bit of weight on it to keep it from uh, keep it from bending. But if you let it dry mostly in the mold, you usually don't have that problem when you take it out. Now here you see on the side of the building, I have hung the store sign, just like I did uh, the Cafe Chat Noir um, using that same scroll work. And I actually printed the sign twice and attached it to each side. So either direction you see the sign. And then um, if you remember back uh, to the second floor, I had these embellishments on each side of the, um, the uh, uh, balconies 
walkout balconies. And so I did the same thing and uh, put medallions on each side of the, uh, the store window. I used the same mold, but I chose a much smaller, um, a much smaller little medallion so, uh, so that the scale worked out right for that. So this is the last piece that I did. You see there's the, uh, the sandwich board sign uh, advertising the store and a sale that they've got coming up and also um, a book signing that's going to be happening. Of course, it's all in French. And um, I just thought it might be nice since all there was was just the window. I thought it would be nice to have a little bit more presence of the store. And so I added this and just set it on a corner. So you've got the sign and then also I've got this little chest for my stash that has the rows of books in it, uh, same books that I used in the windows, and I just stuffed them with paper, and I just thought that was kind of a nice addition to go along with the window itself. That's it for the bookstore. If you want more information, down below in the description area, I'll have a link to my blog that will have the post that goes with this, where you'll find all the information on the collage sheets and the detailed supply list. I'll be back again in a couple of weeks with another segment.